This is Stuffy Like, you can call me Ursa, and we are not things. Now much digital ink has been spilled on pretty much every aspect of Fury Road. So in the interest of hopefully not saying all the same things again, we're going to talk about approaches to objectification, Legally Blonde, Lily Allen, and Fury Road. Stick with me. First, the plots of Mad Max Fury Road go with Dusley. Nah, but really. The world kind of ended, and a bunch of people are involved in a cult kind of relationship with Immortan Joe, mostly because he has the water, which is kind of necessary for life. One of his, uh, faithful lieutenants, because clearly the man has not read the evil overlord list, is Imperator Furiosa, who is driving the war rig to Gastown and the bullet farm to get... Well, she's going to Gastown and the bullet farm, clearly she's not going for rainbows and puppies. But, in fact, this is all a ruse, and Joe's, uh wives have begged her to help them escape, which she is duly doing. This goes down very well. Side note, kudos to the movie for not needing to show us the horrifying realities of sex slavery and leaving us to mostly fill in the gaps for ourselves. Comics, you say? No, there are no comics filling in those gaps. That would be gross and unnecessary. Anyway, the movie is Joe chasing down his wives to get them back, then the wives meeting the Vuvalini, and after a suggestion from Max, yeah, he's actually in the movie, deciding that the best thing to do is stage a coup and then running back the other way in order to do so. They kill Joe, they take over the Citadel. Woo! I hope you're good at diplomacy, military tactics, and water rationing because you basically just signed up to be a government in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Side note, I would totally watch a TV series where they explored that. Anyway, Fury Road is a great film, and one which takes its theme very seriously. Max and the wives and the unborn children are all seen as things by Joe and the war boys, but the movie gives us no excuse to objectify them regardless. The wives have agency, distinct personalities, and their own conflicts and roles and things to do in the story. Crazy, right? Objectification, by the way, is treating someone like an object rather than a person. Fury Road is an explicit escape from objectification because we are not things, we want bodily autonomy, and our babies will not be warlords. They are not your property. And it goes very Hero's Journey final stage with this. I make my own choices, and often that means getting the same outcome but for my own reasons. Nux gets a whole if redemption arc where his outcome remains the same, I'm gonna die historic on a fury road. but the context is transformed. He does it to protect the people he cares about rather than as a grab for glory and immortality. Max is forced to give blood to Nux at the start of the film, but by the end chooses to give blood to Furiosa because she is his friend. Same outcome, transformed context. The wives end up back at the Citadel, right where they started, but now they are there as people, as conquerors even, rather than as possessions, and so on. But in addition to this classic hero's journey, we're back at the starting point, but it's different because this time I'm choosing it thing, we have the villains. The villains obviously don't get that arc, but they get not to be things regardless, they get moments of humanization. I had a baby brother, and he was perfect! Perfect in every way! They are terrible people who do unspeakably awful things, but as bombastic and over the top as the movie gets, even they get to be people. Nobody is an object, and nobody is a cipher, although I guess you could argue cannon fodder one way or the other. Being cannon fodder is also objectification, albeit of a non-sexual sort, and the fact that it can be argued either way is testament to the fact that there is no grand arbiter of what is or is not objectification in media. For example, going back to sexual objectification for a minute, I love Legally Blonde, but while I personally enjoy its subversion of the expectations we would normally have of the blonde fashionista who wants her boyfriend back, not everyone sees it as the love letter to self-determination that I do. And that's okay. But Legally Blonde, like Fury Road, is a film about self-determination. That said, it does have a somewhat different approach. Taking what could be a very tired and cliched female competition plot and subverting it by making Elle a rounded character who ultimately decides that befriending the competitor and ditching the jerky ex-boyfriend is the way to go. And she has many lady friends to boot. It takes our expectation of the capabilities and motivations of a conventionally attractive fashion major and it punts them over the hedge. In the same way, Fury Road kicks the expectation of helpless women needing to be rescued in the teeth. Not just because their rescuer is a woman, or because the people they enlist for help are women, but also because the wives help with their own escape, even though they have basically no idea what they're doing. And I am here for kicking expectations in the teeth in the service of making a point about personhood. Also for sisters doing it for themselves, so to speak. Subversion of expected tropes is, admittedly, the easiest way to make this point. Fury Road does it, Legally Blonde does it, Buffy the Vampire Slayer does it. Tiny blonde teenager and monster walk into an alley, and the tiny blonde teenager walks back out. 
in all those cases, you just let the characters be people and you don't undermine your own point by letting the camera treat them as objects either. This is why there's maybe one 10 second sequence of soft focus wives in the entire film, and even then the focus is as much on the water as it is the impossibly incongruous women with all their own teeth in a post-apocalyptic landscape. Because if you decide to use cliched tropes more or less straight to make a point about objectification, then you're in the realms of parody and satire, and that's... That's much harder to make stick. I've never really been able to get behind most examples of ironic objectification, like, say, zombie strippers, because, I don't know, maybe the joke is too subtle for me. It just feels like you're trying to have your cake and eat it too. Look at us, we're being all ironically sexy. Look at all those stupid sheep men drooling over the women who are about to kill and eat them. The example I've seen which comes closest to working for me is Lily Allen's video for Hard Out Here, which is a very earwormy song about objectification double standards and the glass ceiling. No, really. But I'm still not quite on board. I mean, clearly the video is meant to be a joke, incisive commentary on the state of modern music and its standards for female performers. There's a 45 second sequence at the start where a dude in a suit criticises Alan's appearance while a surgeon sucks fat out of her. And then she sings about double standards in the glass ceiling and how she won't be confined to the kitchen. And then she's on a kitchen set. I see what you did there. But most of the video is close-ups of boobs and butts and thighs and, well, body parts as opposed to whole people, basically. Not to mention product placement. I mean, I get that she's mocking all of these things, but she's still getting paid to do the product placement, even if it's meant to be a joke. And the dancers who are wiggling their butts are still having cameras zoom in on their wiggling butts, in spite of the fact that there's a specific line which claims... I need to shake my ass for you, cause I've got a brain. It's very much a case of, I see what you're trying to do here, and parts of it do work for me, and overall it almost works for me, but only almost because it still feels like all the other women in the video can be objectified, but you better not objectify her, you jerk. Further reinforced by the fact that she's the only one who gets to wear clothes. Well, leggings and a leotard. But she gets to have her skin covered, at least. Like I said, there's no grand arbiter on what is objectification and what is not. Bits of it work for me, bits of it don't. Overall, that means it just doesn't, but meh. Mine is not the only opinion. But that just reinforces how hard, for a bitch, it is to make a video which can really boast ironic objectification. And this is one of the things that works so well with Fury Road. There is a naked woman in Fury Road, there are beautiful women in wafty clothes, there are women chained up and breastfeeding, but they are framed in a way that makes you think of them as people, they aren't objectified even ironically. I don't feel like the nudity is superfluous. That woman is hidden by her hair and the camera work. Those women are consistently treated like people. Those women are practically naked naked, but what you feel is horror for their situation, rather than like they're there to give you something boob-related to look at. We are not things is such a big part of the movie's message, it's nice that they don't undermine that with cheap sexualization and characters who are completely interchangeable and have no personalities. In case I haven't made it clear, I love this movie. It is a joy and the gift that keeps on giving. Every time I watch it, I see something new and subtle and cool that they did. And it achieves this, generally, without treating its characters as meat. And it's just so darn optimistic with its redemption themes and hope, it just makes me feel better about the world. <sighs> anyway, that's about our lot for now, so Patreon is up here. Twitter and Tumblr links are in the doobly-doo. And most important of all, may you ride immortal, shiny and chrome. See you next time. <sighs> you know what? It's good to be back.